So Palantir has had an amazing start to 2023. They're up more than 30% year to date, as you can see on the screen right now. Let's comment on what they're doing right from a high level strategy perspective, as well as talk some about the takeover rumors. And I will go a bit more into the details on how such a process would look. But first, let's talk about the high level strategy of Palantir. Now, one of the things that I like to compare the different macroeconomic cycles to is that of the fox and the hedgehog. <clears throat> So when times are good, companies are like foxes, jumping around, sniffing at everything, exploring, taking risks. We have the new projects, they're making moonshot bets. But then when the macroeconomic climate turns, then suddenly everybody's turning into a hedgehog. They're curling up into a little ball and putting out those spikes, slashing down the visions where they previously had moonshot goals, focusing on profitability. And where do we recognize this? Well, if we take a look at the recent earnings from Palantir, last quarter was profitable and they had a profitable outlook for this year as well. And this is one thing that investors really like in uncertain times. They love profitability. Growth stocks without profitability are still being heavily punished by investors. <clears throat> However, in the case for Palantir here, we can see that they made some recovery. And this is due to them being a hedgehog ahead of time, focusing on profitability. And it's almost like they predicted this macroeconomic environment and talking about lower growth rates. It will be interesting to see if they all of a sudden increase their growth rate targets for revenue. And if that comes to fruition as well, then well, it's kind of eerie, to be honest. <laughs> Anyways, let's move into the takeover rumors. So I'm going to speculate a bit here on what's been going on and use some of the experience that I have from the investment banking sector. So one of the things that investment bankers will do is that they will try to facilitate mergers and acquisitions. It's not like the management of Palantir suddenly wants to sell the company. What I believe likely happened and why the CEO hinted at possible takeover in the latest communication is due to the fact that I think that maybe an investment banker reached out and said, hey, you would be great to sell to and then this other big company. So they would basically act matchmakers here, the investment bankers to facilitate, find buyers and sellers and then match them together and make the deal happen so that they can get their fee for facilitating this, making the deal happen. So I believe that this could potentially be the case. There could potentially be an investment banker there trying to sell this deal. <clears throat> so that's why we have this comment. And in the case of a possible acquisition of Palantir, it would indeed take some time. There would be a need for analysts to do due diligence on the numbers, to sign a NDA and take a look at the books and make a proper valuation. However, as a rule of thumb, one of the things that tend to happen when we get a takeover offer on the company is that they need a certain amount, quite a high amount of shareholders to agree for the deal to happen in the first place. And the tender offer tends to be 20% above current market going rate in most cases. However, in some cases, if there's huge potential for synergy effects and it's a rare capability that's being hyped up, such as AI in this case, everybody's talking about AI, right? Well, then it could potentially be even a greater premium to market prices than 20%. This is just me speculating, having opinions on what could possibly be the reason for the CEO mentioning the potential of a takeover here. But anyways, I hope you enjoyed this video commenting on Palantir. And as always, I hope you make a ton of money, whatever investments you decide to make. Take care now. Bye bye.